So I want to show you how I'm going to tune up this old rusty draw knife and hopefully get it back to work. It's pretty pitted up and that's kind of a mess, especially if you want to be uh, flattening out the whole back of it. If that's your strategy, I think it's going to be kind of a losing one on this because you have to go so deep to get beyond that pitting. So I'm going to, I'm going to go about this a whole other way. But first, what I want to do, and I do this for any draw knife I'm going to be working on, I'm going to file the back of it, what I call the spine of the tool. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's going to be my reference both for grinding and then for honing it. So that's my first job. And sadly, what you'll find is most of these tools at some point in their life were used to split wood, which means somebody hit the back of it with a hammer. So it's a little bit more work uh, depending on which one you're doing. But this is just the first job I have to do. The nice thing is it's, it, it only has to be done once. This is just uh, going to smooth that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just take a file and I'm going to do what's called draw filing here. And I don't push the file forward like this. What I'm going to do is hold it at an angle with the handle back here, or what, I should have a handle on there, but with the handle back here and I'm just going to pull it towards myself like this. That's going to give me the smoothest possible cut. So I don't have to actually push the file across, I simply have to pull it like this. And at first it might be kind of hard to get through that rust. But once it does, it's going to start taking some nice cuts and leave me a pretty nice surface. So here's my strategy for sharpening this tool. You can see that there's a little piece of high carbon steel laminated to the back of the tool. That comprises the cutting edge. Now there's pitting all around this thing and normally that's not a problem because you can just grind it off this bevel, but the back is going to be much more difficult to get past. So what I'm going to do, as you see here in red, is I'm going to grind the bevel as usual, but I'm also going to put a little back bevel onto it. But the key to this is to make sure you don't put too much of a back bevel on there so that you can still have the cutting edge comprised of the high carbon steel. So now that I've got the back edge of this knife smooth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start grinding on this. I already did a little exploratory grinding just freehand to see exactly how deep that pitting went so I could see how, how I might achieve this. But now I'm actually going to use my grinder in a little setup that I've got that is again going to use this back part of my blade here as a reference. And you can see here how the, the uh, back of the blade is going to sit on this little block I have here and it allows me to lean it ever so slightly forward and move it along my grinder at a slight angle here so I can avoid hitting the body of the grinder. And that's how I'm going to get a nice even grind on there. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to grind the back of it. So this is pretty simple stuff. I think uh, once you've set this up you'll find that it works pretty well. So here I'm checking out exactly where the grind is hitting and realizing I probably need to adjust my tool rest just a little bit to get the grind to uh, shift a bit. Now I'm waxing up the uh, spine of this to make it slide more easily and I've adjusted it to grind the bevel on the back.
The light touch is the key to this. You'll notice I'm barely holding that knife. I'm really letting just the weight of the knife push it up against the wheel. So now that I've got a bevel ground on there on both sides, making this a knife edge cutter, I can just use a little diamond hone here if I want to, to hone the edge. I'm going to end up using my, my tool, my draw sharp tool, but I'll show you how basically this is the draw sharp. Uh, in your own hands if you wanted to, you basically just have to reference off the back of the spine. You see how I'm running my fingers on here, and then I just tilt this forward and try and maintain as even of an angle as I possibly can so that I really am just hitting that very edge. You know, tuning up a, a knife, especially in this kind of condition, uh, I don't want to sharpen anything but the edge. There's a lot of, a lot of other work I, I could do to it, but all that is going to really be cosmetic. All I need to do is get the geometry right and the edge sharp. So I just want to show you how I can do this just by using my fingers as a guide while holding this little diamond hone. And of course, this is really just what my draw sharp tool does. It just fixes this angle based on that same reference we were just using. So now if I flip it over here, I can do a similar move. I just put my fingers up against the back here, and I run it like this. You could also use sandpaper on a little stick if you wanted to. I mean, really, just honing the edge does not have to be that big a deal. You just got to keep moving through your, your uh, grits as you go, just like you would with any sort of sharpening. But now that I've gotten it sort of started there, I am going to go ahead and use my draw sharp to finish it out. So this is how I set my draw sharp so that I get those uh, correct relationships between the spine of the tool and the bevel. Basically, I just take the tool like this, which has these little posts on it, and these posts have some abrasive on there, diamond on one side and sandpaper on the other. I'm going to pop it up onto here and make sure it's just connecting with just the very tip of the tool. I don't want it to connect with the, the hole of the bevel, just the very edge. That's the only part that does the cutting. And then I do the same thing on the back by moving it over a little bit more until it's just hitting at that very edge. This way, I really save a lot of motion if I'm really just uh, working on that very edge. I'll put a little oil on here. Okay. And then just like I was using my fingers before, I lock up against the back of this, tip it forward, just like you saw a minute ago. And I am going to use this now just to polish that edge. We'll see if we can't get this thing back into shape. So this is a diamond that's cutting on here. And the diamond, just like the file, works through motion, not pressure. So I really want to be light in my pressure and create a lot of motion so that it's going to give me nice fine scratch pattern on this edge. And I basically do this until I find a little tiny burr on the flip side of this tool. And I've got a burr on the flip side, so now I put it to the other side of those little bumpers that you see here, and I'm going to do those sides too now. This side's still a little rough because I can feel some of the rust that's still on the face of uh, this tool. There's a lot of rust on this thing, but it's still going to do a fine job. And I just go until that burr is now gone, which it is, and it's flipped back to the very front here. So now my job is to reduce the size of that burr. So now I'm just going to take really light strokes, and I'll go to the other side and take very light strokes. The whole idea here is just that I'm just tending to that edge. I don't want to keep creating a huge burr. There's just absolutely no benefit to doing that. All right. And now I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to use this 600 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to stay on the same spot that I start on that sandpaper as I do this the whole way through. So I'm not going to move this little post anyway. I'm going to just stay in that spot. Even though it seems like that might be the sandpaper getting dull, it's actually getting fine because the particles on the surface of the sandpaper break down into smaller, sharper particles, which means it becomes a finer grit. So it goes from uh, 600 grit sandpaper to 800 and 1,000 and then up until finally you're getting a mirror polish just off nothing but sandpaper. And then I'll do the back here. Again, this is all about replacing one scratch pattern with another because I've already got the shape of the tool. The geometry is now set. This is simply about polishing that edge. And once I feel like I've got a good pattern there, now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm just going to switch from back to front and back to front, just minding that any burr that might be left, I want to get just by pushing it one direction and then the other while really finely honing it. And there it is. All right, I'm going to be very careful with the tool now because it's pretty sharp. And I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to clean off that grit. We'll take a good close look at it, and then we'll see how it cuts. All right, so here you can see the grind looks really nice, and so does that lead edge. And when I flip it around, you're going to see it's got a very similar pattern on the back. It's got a nice grind, and then it's got a nice polish right on that lead edge. And that's really the part that does the work, 
And so that's the part I'm counting on. So the way that I'm going to test to see if I did a good job sharpening this or not is I'm going to cut some end grain and some pine because that's very revealing of what this uh, edge condition is. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to take a little bit off this corner here, get myself started. And you can already hear that it's got a nice kiss to it while it's cutting. It probably still needs a little bit more honing. So what I'm seeing is that there's a lot of sort of white patchiness to this. And that tells me there's still some dull spots. I probably need to go a little farther with my honing. I did a pretty, pretty cursory job of that. There's parts of it that are absolutely as sharp as they're ever going to be, but there's also parts that aren't. So I can see that from the way it's working for me now. I'm also going to try it with the bevel down, even though I think this one is now basically going to be a bevel up tool. So this is going to be a bevel up user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a little bit more honing with my draw sharp and then I'm going to come back and see if I can't get the entire edge to cut as well as portions of it are now. So I ran it through that same process I showed you with the draw sharp, starting with the diamond and then moving to the sandpaper. But one thing I did also was I did smooth the front of this a little bit. I think the fact that it was hitting on that rust actually did have quite an impact on what kind of a surface I could get at the edge. So uh, I just ran it right through there just like I showed you before. And now let's see if it, what kind of surface I can get out of it. And you can see that already the whole blade itself, there's no more of that white streaking going on. So it's giving me really nice results. Now, I can also take a strop. This is just a piece of leather with some honing compound on it. And I'm just going to strop it just a little bit. You know, a sharp edge is a very tiny thing. And it doesn't take much to affect it. So this honing compound on this uh, piece of leather does a really great job of it. I'm trying to maintain the angle, though, that I had basically with my draw sharp. I don't want to like round that over too much. I'm just trying to get right at that edge. And so now it should be even that much sharper. You can hear, hopefully, how much it is. And it gives a nice glassy surface. And that's what I'm going for. Now, I am going to clean up the rest of this tool a little bit. I don't want to have all this uh, gross rust on there. But I did want to show you that sometimes, even though you're looking at a draw knife that doesn't look very promising, there is still a way to make it work for you. You just got to think a lot about the fact that this, this back here is not going to flatten out and get rid of that pitting for you. So by putting that little back bevel on the back, I think we, we did a pretty good service to this tool.